So it seems we have an epidemic of these stupid water cups or, or holder jugs, whatever you want to call them. I, I see people walking around with the, the stand cup or the stand, you know, whatever it's called. They're heavy. How much water are people carrying around? It, it's absolutely absurd. I, you know, I was out with someone and they bring this thing with them. It was like we had a third person with us. What's wrong with a normal... Like a normal water bottle that you can get and, and refill. It's lightweight. It's efficient. I, and, and, and why does it have to become a whole thing where everyone's obsessed with it? Someone told me they, they can't even get these cups because they were hard to find in stores. Like, uh, are, are they collectible? Steve Weiner here from GetRebix.com, and yesterday we went over our introduction to Windows 365, everything you need to know about it to get started, right? We took a look at the different types there are, how it works, um, all that good stuff. What we're going to talk about today is how to actually provision it in Intune, and we're going to go through all the settings in detail that pertain to setting up Cloud PC. Uh, look, I'll be honest with you, they're just absolutely ridiculous. It's like people are carrying around their own bathtub to drink out of. I just, I don't want any part of it. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. All right, so let's dive in and how to set up the provisioning for Windows 365 cloud PCs. Uh, you will need a license assigned to a user, but we're going to worry about that in the next episode where we talk about best practices for assignments, um, you know, groupings, things like that. So we're going to click on devices and very simply Windows 365 has its own section. This is the main overview page for Windows 365. Gives you some links to different areas, right? You can look at your connection quality report, resource performance. That's going to tie into the endpoint analytics to show you generally the machine's performance. You'll also notice the stats here. So you can see things like provisioning stats, um, how many devices you have, how many failed, how many are in a, a grace period, and the same thing with uh, any kind of health issues that you can see over here. So they'll let you know if there's any problems. Then we'll move to all cloud PCs. This will be a list of everything provisioned in the environment. Uh, so you can see I have a good mix. I have, that's my own personal cloud PC. I have a few others here. Uh, these are my frontline PCs right and we'll talk about that more in depth as we go along so anything you have provision you can see an intune to manage it but you're also going to see it right here and it's going to give you some basic uh, information about it moving on to provisioning policies this is where you can set up the different policies we talked about and these allow you to kind of configure different kinds of cloud pcs right um, i have policies for my frontline uh Windows 365 devices, I have frontline shared, I have my own personal one, I have my basic policies, and you can assign these to different groups. And as long as the groups are licensed, that's how the PCs get provisioned. Now, custom images is interesting, and this is what you would use uh, with the W365 Enterprise SKU. So if you have custom images you use for maybe Azure Virtual Desktop or something else, they do let you add it here. So to add it, you would need to have one already. I don't believe I have one, but we're going to check together. Image version. Yeah, so you would have to choose a subscription, and then it would show you any image you have related to that. So I don't have any. If I did, that's where they would be. Generally, I tend not to use the custom images because for, you know, my needs around this, or at least the needs of the organizations I work with, we do fine with the gallery images, and I'll take you through that as well. Now, Azure Network Connection, okay? This is where you can have an Azure VNet and you'd be able to join a device to a domain via that. So this is where you would add your own network connection, like an Azure VNet. And this would allow you, if you choose to, do a hybrid join, right, to a domain for a cloud PC. Lastly, we have user settings, and these are the overall settings that are applied to the user logging into the cloud PC. So if we were to look at these and I hit create, you can see we can check local admin on or off. That'll determine if the user has local administrator privileges. We can allow the user to reset their own cloud PC. We can also specify the point in time restore service. So do we want to allow a user to initiate their own restore? Meaning if they want to move back, they can. And then of course, um, you can determine how often these points are being created every four hours, six hours, 12 hours. So 
you can actually have snapshots of the cloud PC and then a user can roll back themselves. This is very helpful for developers, I typically find. All right, so now that we went over the primary dashboard, let's look at the provisioning policies a little deeper. So we're gonna create one so I can talk about every setting inside the policy. First off, you would name it, and this is your W365 provisioning policy name. Maybe come up with something more creative than that. So this will work with either an enterprise license or a frontline license. Now frontline has different options to it. And we'll talk about this in a future episode. There's also some stuff on my channel where I show off frontline and shared. So feel free to check that out. But for the purposes of this, we're going to stick with enterprise. So join type, this is where you have options. You can either hybrid join or enter join. Now, of course, you know how I feel about it. I'm all for the enter joining. However, Windows 365 is kind of a good use case. If you do need something hybrid join, this is a good way to do it because it's smoother than let's say autopilot on a physical PC. Don't even get me started. So as long as you're enter joining, you're gonna have the option to use a Microsoft hosted network where you're just picking your location, right? I'm here in New Jersey, so I'm gonna do US East, you know, um, and it'll automatically select the region for you. I recommend leaving that on. Now for hybrid join, you have to pick an Azure network connection, meaning you have to, you would have had to configure this on the Azure network uh, connection menu we looked at before. So make sure you do that. But if you're just looking to do a straight enter join, we would do a Microsoft hosted one. You have the location and then you have the option to uh, authenticate users into their machine uh, with SSO, right? Single sign on. To be clear, there's two sign-ins happening. There is the sign-in to the Windows 365 service. That's when you're signing into the app. I showed that yesterday. Um, you know, you're being authenticated, you have MFA, whatever it is. Then you're also signing into the PC itself once you get up there. So if you check this box, you can have that one SSO take you all the way through. So users won't have to sign into the PC again you know, your choice, whatever you want that experience to be, as long as it aligns with your security uh, posture. Next, we have to choose the image for the cloud PC. Now you have two options under image type. You have gallery image and custom image. Gallery image lets you choose what Microsoft creates for you. I really like this because there's a lot of options. You can see we have feature updates going as far back as, you know, Windows 10 22H2, Windows 11 22H2, and it takes us all the way through to the current version. You also have the option to include the Microsoft 365 apps office already baked into that image. So you don't have to deploy them to the device. So it's very convenient. Um, your other option, of course, is the custom image. So if you did add a custom image before in that menu, I showed you, it would appear here and you can use it. But for gallery, all you have to do is pick one. Why not go with 24H2 with uh, Microsoft 365 apps? Taking a quick pause here, you know, you saw how many feature versions we have. It's probably not a bad idea for an organization who wants to test their policies, their apps, their settings before they roll out a new feature version of Windows is to spin up a cloud PC. Even if you had one license to spin up a cloud PC on the next version of Windows, that would allow you to have it in Intune, kind of do your testing on it. And you could always, you know, deprovision it until the next one comes out or you don't have to, you know, you could just leave that there as the testing for future feature updates. So yeah, I see that as a really cool use case, you know, if you don't have a pool of physical machines to constantly be testing. So somewhere to start. And the next page brings us to some configuration. You can set the language and region of the cloud PC. So you can even have different provisioning policies for different regions. You get to apply a naming template, right? They suggest something for you here. CPC for cloud PC. I've done that. Um, now the username being part of the PC name is interesting because remember, these are user assigned. Um, so it's pretty interesting in terms of, you know, if you want to use a naming template, you get to have the username be a part of that. So if I wanted to do W365 dash username, uh, and we can give it a four. Let's continue. And then a random string would be, yeah. So here I have W365 dash four characters of the username and five random characters 
I could also make that five here. Oh, nope, it's gotta be 15 or less. So yeah, nine, 10, 11, two dashes, W365 is three. So it is what it is, but it, it's similar to autopilot where you're giving it a static and a random character. So yeah, just remember, uh, you have to follow their parameters when naming. If you don't care, just leave it blank. It'll do it itself. And lastly, you have the option to just throw this thing into auto patch. Um, I don't have auto patch turn on in the tenant, but if you have it available, you can add that right in. Otherwise, you're just going to manage and update the cloud PCs with Windows Update for Business Rings. The rest is pretty straightforward in terms of scope tags, assignments, and then just reviewing and creating the policy. So once the provisioning policy is created and assigned to a group, you'll see it start to provision right here under all cloud PCs. And once it has the green provision status, you can instruct the end user to launch the Windows app. And once they sign in, they'll see their PC ready for them. I think it's interesting how easy Microsoft made the provisioning process for Windows 365. Again, this is a task that, you know, you would think VDI you have all, you know, VDI teams in your organization, but this is something you can very easily put on your Intune admins plate and uh, they could just do it right here in Intune. You saw that. And the cool thing is, depending on how I assign it, I can get all my same policies, all my same applications, and I don't have to treat this as a whole separate class of devices. So, you know, it's a really efficient way to introduce virtual desktops into the environment, especially from an admin perspective. Um, so uh, next up, we'll talk best practices, things as far as assignment and groups, but hopefully between going over the basics and the 101 to showing you everything in the provisioning policies, uh, you feel pretty confident about getting started in it. You feel pretty confident about getting started in it. Let me know in the Discord if you use Windows 365, uh, anything specific you do about it, what questions you have, and we'll be seeing you.